Even though the United States is in the midst of an addiction crisis, there is no federal oversight of these treatment and rehab centers. Dr. Kamala Green Genese is a New York State licensed clinical psychologist. She is also a board member at the Partnership to End Addiction. Thanks so much, Dr. Green, for joining us. Three overdose deaths in a matter of days. Have you ever heard of something like this happening at a rehab? Uh, no, it, 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 so it sounds like an unimaginable tragedy for those families. And I, I would like to just acknowledge that initially, that there are three families that have lost their family members uh, in a tragic and unexpected fashion. So it is not typical for that many to happen. It is not unheard of for there to be uh, critical incidents at rehabs, but that many in that short length of time sounds very much extreme. We just heard from our reporter, Kelly Beeson, that police have been called to this rehab more than 100 times for six overdoses, as well as a rape, an assault, and a stabbing. Uh, we heard from a former employee who said it was worse inside that rehab than inside prison. How is a rehab allowed to operate like this? Well, they, they should not be operating that way. Uh, I mean, all rehabs and residential treatment facilities have regulations both from the state uh, and from other national accrediting bodies, and I don't know if this organization was accredited, that outline very strict procedures as it relates to uh, search protocols, safety protocols, rounding, toxicology testing. The only thing that I, not knowing exactly what went on in this facility, is that it sounds as though the policies and procedures for ensuring environmental safety have not been followed. Is anybody inspecting these rehabs to make sure they're following recommended guidelines for treatment? They should be. Typically, the state of Indiana will have a review uh, every three years for them to have an operating certificate to, to run a rehab facility. And again, best practices and for families that are seeking residential treatment, you should always seek a treatment facility that also has a national accreditation by either Joint Commission or CAR. Uh, the uh, Association for Rehabilitation Facilities, because that's a higher standard. But to have an operating certificate to build state, you have to have an operating certificate. And so you, I don't know when the last certification uh, uh, standing or, or review was done by the state of Indiana. Well, it just it opened. Certainly, it just, I mean, oh, it, oh, it, it just literally opened. just opened in August. It's not even been open a year, and they've already had more than 100 calls to police. And it's worth pointing out, this rehab is expect, you know, they're getting paid. They're taking in money. People are paying right. through their insurance. Right. This uh, landmark boasts on its website that it accepts all insurance and offers the best medication addiction treatment possible. That does not seem to be what we're hearing from former employees and what we're seeing when you look at police logs. Absolutely. It, it's the police logs, that very poignant uh, to, you know, report from the from the employee, seems to me that this, this facility is, is having serious, serious difficulties operating. Right. States have the authority States have the authority to cease admissions if they are concerned about the safety of well, patients. Well, we're hearing, Dr. Green, we're hearing actually tonight that the state of Indiana is, in fact, looking into possibly revoking Landmark's yeah. Uh, yeah. license to operate there. Landmark uh, has 14 treatment centers in 10 states. And because of the addiction crisis in this country, we're seeing all these rehabs pop up everywhere. What's your advice tonight to people on how they can find someone that has quality care? Because, you know, once a patient's inside rehab, they can't call outside to report that this is dangerous or this is not working for me. So what do you advise people to do if they're looking for a reputable place offering good treatment? Well, as I mentioned, I think the first standard is to ensure that the rehab has a national uh, safety accreditation, either by, say, Joint Commission or, or CARF. That would be the first place I would start. But then I would also ask them, there, there, are, there are around five or six key evidence-based ingredients for, for reputable and uh, effective residential treatment. That includes access to medications, psychiatric assessment, evidence-based groups, treatment outcome referrals, and post-treatment tracking. So if I was a parent or a friend, I would ask questions around those five areas. And if the individuals at the facility could not answer how they were implementing treatment according to those five standards, I would not go to them. Yeah, but here's the problem, Dr. Green. Landmark's website says it does all that stuff. 
And clearly, when you look at uh, more than 100 police calls to that rehab center in less than a year and former employees, you know, talking about what conditions are like, three overdose deaths in a matter of days, um, something's wrong. And you would never know that looking at the website or talking to the pleasant person at admissions who's oh, no, happy to yes. take your money. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.